you look over here and there's going to be our tavern number two we're going to talk about which is the the the, the uh, Hickman Tavern and in the background you see the dike back there now in the early days that dike wasn't there we would have been looking down on the French Broad River and we probably could see some of the steamboats coming up and down on the French Broad River right over there looking down that way but now that the Hickman Tavern is an 1820s Five Bay Federal building and Five Bay Federal just means that it's got five windows across the front of it. The Fane family originally built the Hickman Tavern and by the 18, mid 1840s uh, it had been sold to James Hickman. The Hickman brothers at that time were building our new courthouse which was completed in 1845 and they ran it as the, tav as the tavern during their time. Uh, it has a very interesting architectural feature in the, the flat gable ends on it where it goes up to the two chimneys up there on the end of it. That gable, that type of architecture harkens back to the uh, period of the 1600s, but it was used in East Tennessee up into the mid-1800s, that, that feature on some of the buildings. And I think we can uh, provide you a special treat today by taking you inside the uh, town hall. The Hickman Tavern is now the offices for the town of Dandridge, and there's some beautiful construction architectural features in there that I'd like to take you in and see. So let's walk over there. Now we're inside the Hickman Tavern. Thank goodness we've come in from the rain and in here uh, the architecture here is still very original, dating back to the 1820s. Hart pine, original hart pine wood floors. Look at the tight grain in that wood. This is the original old grove pine that is no longer available in, anymore today, anywhere in the country, unless it's salvaged material. And how many people, how many important people in the history of this county walked up and down this stairwell right here? Every time I put my hand on this beautiful curved stairwell, I think about the people that came here before me. And it's a freestanding spiral staircase from the basement of the old Hickman Tavern all the way up to the third floor. It's a magnificent piece of architecture and it's a showcase of the craftsmanship that was available in the early days of Danbridge. Really amazing. Now I'd like to take you down to the basement and show you a few other architectural features that are special in the basement. Downstairs is uh, occupied by the local uh, VFW Hall, Veterans of Foreign War. And over here we have an original door and look at the hardware. Look at the hardware that holds this. This is the original hardware hand forged by a blacksmith shop somewhere in downtown Danbridge in the 1820s and is still in use today on this door. Now they've put more modern hinges on this door, exterior door, but over here I can show you a door that still has the original hinges along with the hardware. Let's step over here. Here we've got a smaller set of hinges, still original hinges, original hinges and there's the hardware that has never been changed since the 1820s. Look at the latch on the door. The little doorknob, the latch, all, all original to this building. And isn't it amazing that we preserve these things for you in downtown Dandridge in our National Historic District. Dandridge was a good spot for the taverns for two reasons. One was we were on the stagecoach route from Knoxville to Avenue, Virginia and on to Washington, D.C. We're about 30 miles from Knoxville and about 30 miles is the average mileage stage route got that accomplished in one day, in one day's time travel. So there was a need for overnight lodging for the people riding on the stage route. Later, as the steamboats came along, the steamboats were able to come up the French Broad River and there was a fine landing for the steamboats here in Danbridge, uh, just on the other side of the dike that's back there behind us. And uh, the steamboats brought travelers back and forth and there was a need for overnight lodging. There was a need for overnight lodging for the school kids in those days. A lot of them traveled or had to walk for many, many miles to come to school and they would stay in some of the boarding houses during the week while they went to school and then go home and do their farm chores on the weekends. So those were three good reasons why there was a big need for overnight lodging in downtown Danbridge. This building is named for James Hickman. Now Hickman, there's, there, there is a misunderstanding 
that got attached to the early walking tour that was not, you know, before I did the research on it, that James Hickman built this building. Well, he lived in this building in 1845. He and his brother were also the bricklayers and the, and the builder of the courthouse. I always thought it was kind of unlikely that James Hickman built this building and the courthouse at the same time. I thought, how could you build two of the main buildings in Danvers at the same time? So I did some research and I found out that actually John Fain is probably the guy that built this building in about 1843, and James Hickman was actually a tenant in this building just prior to 1844 uh, because it actually named some of the tenants and John Fain sold the property to James Hickman, but his name is the one that got attached to the walking tour guide. This is one of the premier of the Five Bay Federal buildings in downtown Danbury. We have two major architectural styles in the historic district. One is federal, which this is a very fine example of. The other is Greek Revival, which the courthouse uh, is the best example of Greek Revival style. But of the, of the uh, 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 federal style, this is a five bay federal, which means it's got five windows across the front. The Vance building up here across from the courthouse is a three bay federal, which means it's got three windows across the front of it. Uh, but it, these, these are solid brick walls. They're probably about three bricks thick. You'll notice in the way the brick was put together, it's built in the days before we had rebar. And so to hold those brick layers together, every so many courses they would turn the bricks the opposite direction, uh, long ways, and that would lock those layers of brick together. But the front of this building is unique in that it uses the Flemish bond pattern, which has a wide brick and then the end out. And a wide brick as you go across makes a much neater, cleaner brick style, the Flemish bond. But we typically, and in this building as an example, when you get to the sides of the back, they go back to the common bond or the running bond pattern. I always thought it was kind of unlikely that James Hickman built this building and the courthouse at the same time. I thought, how could you build two of the main buildings in Danvers at the same time? So I did some research and I found out that actually John Fain is probably the guy that built this building in about 1843 and James Hickman was actually a tenant in this building just prior to 1844 uh, because it actually named some of the tenants and John Fain sold the property to James Hickman but his name is the one that got attached to the walking tour guide. This is one of the premier of the five bay federal buildings in downtown Danger. We have two major architectural styles in the historic district. One is federal, which this is a very fine example of. The other is Greek Revival, which the courthouse uh, is the best example of Greek Revival style. But of the, of the uh, 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 federal style, this is a five bay federal, which means it's got five windows across the front. The Vance building up here across from the courthouse is a three bay federal, which means it's got three windows across the front of it. Uh, but it, these, these are solid brick walls. They're probably about three bricks thick. You'll notice in the way the brick was put together, it's built in the days before we had rebar. And so to hold those brick layers together, every so many courses they would turn the bricks the opposite direction, uh, long ways, and that would lock those layers of brick together. But the front of this building is unique in that it uses the Flemish bond pattern, which has a wide brick and then the end out. And a wide brick as you go across makes a much neater, cleaner brick style, the Flemish bond. But we typically, and in this building as an example, when you get to the sides of the back, they go back to the common bond or the running bond pattern. Something unique about the Hickman Tavern um, is that Hickman Tavern now is, is, is our town hall. It has the offices for the town of Dandridge. TVA purchased this property when they were building uh, uh, Douglas Lake during 1942 and they occupied it as their offices during that time and then they eventually deeded the property back to the town of Danish but there are stipulations in the deed that it is only to be used for public use so it's housed the library, it's housed the Masonic Lodge, it houses the town hall, the town offices uh, but it will always be some sort of public use building uh, because of that's stipulated in the TVA deed. That means you can come in, the public can come in and walk around and browse around. I wouldn't bother the people that are working here, the town damage employees, but you get to look at the original heart pine floors. And if you look up on the wall on the left in the foyer, you're going to find a portrait of Martha Dandridge, who the town of Dandridge is named for. And uh, so I think that's, that's very special and unique. I'd like to think that maybe Martha Dandridge visited the town, named after her. We have no proof that she was ever here, but it was was named in her honor the first first lady of our country.